I just wanted to go over serial number transferring. Uh, I have people that send me replacement boards online and um, or they send me their original board that's bad, doesn't boot or something's wrong with it. Some of these we fix, some of them we don't. But instead of making them wait for repair, we will read their serial number off their board, transfer it to a tested known working board and ship it out the same day. So the first thing I will do is I will use my BIOS software. Well, the actual first thing I'll do, will hook up my programmer to a USB port. And unlike Lewis Rossman, I like the JTAG right there. I don't have to try and clip onto a chip. I get to use the Apple's JTAG. So I don't take them off. I leave them on there. So after I've read the BIOS, which this one is already finished reading, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I always save it to, you know, working, even though this is not the right number, I don't care. This is just a folder I use for this process. I'll save it there. Hit save. Then using my Apple tool, I will open that file. And I will say, get serial number. Now this is the customer's actual serial number, right there. So I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna say copy, because I want that number. Then I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect their board, because all I wanted was a serial number. Then I'm gonna plug in the replacement board. You don't wanna mess with any of the Intel uh, systems management, or any of that stuff. I just, I wanna leave that intact because this CPU may have different PCH settings that are loaded in the BIOS. I just wanna change its serial number, okay? So then after I've got the thing changed, I will go ahead and read this one. That takes quite a bit of time as it's reading. Actually, it's not reading. Could not find the chip. You see that? Could not find the chip? Well, that's because sometimes these boards will not read unless there's power given to it for a split second. So I'm going to give it power for a split second. starting to read. So the purpose the purpose of doing this, uh, I don't need this one anymore because I've already uh, got the serial number off of it. So I'm going to put it away, file it, so to speak. And now this one is currently being read. I don't want to damage the, any of the Intel management engines, the ME. Um, I want to leave the ME intact. I just want to change the serial number. I don't want to wipe the ME because this board already is loaded and already has a good working BIOS. So I don't want to horse with it. I just want to change its actual serial number. So we're currently reading the BIOS on here. It's loading it. And then we're going to save it over the top of that same file and we're going to uh, extract its serial number and we're going to overwrite it. So, okay, it's completed. As you can see now, we are 100% done. So I'm going to go up here to file. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it right there. I'm going to save. Great. Now I'm going to go over to this tool, and this is the customer serial number, so I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to hit paste. I'm going to select the file, 
is the one we just saved right here. And I'm going to say get serial number. That is the serial number on the replacement board. I'm going to set it to the customer serial number. I'm going to say set serial number. I'm going to save it to that file, which is the modded file. And I'm going to hit save. I go, yep, I want to replace it. And there it is, it saved it. I'm done with this tool. This is um, LBE. It's a, I had to buy the software, but it does work fairly well. Now I'm going to go over here and open my programmer. I'm going to open the modded bin file. And I'm going to hit auto. And it's funny, you have to actually erase these chips to write these chips. Because when you write, they don't change anything that doesn't need change. So I just hit auto and it's going to go through the process of erasing. Then it's going to go through the process of writing. Then it's going to go through the process of verifying. Then it's going to say, okay. And in a few minutes, it will beep at me and tell me it's done. And this is the customer's replacement board. And it will have their serial number on it. And then they can just drop and go. Now, this particular customer uh, shipped me a board without the heat sink on it. So uh, I made another video showing people how to replace this. I know it seems stupid that you should tell somebody how to change heat sink compound, but you'd be surprised. I just want to make it. There's a couple misconceptions on heat sink compound. You know, one of them is more is better, which it is not. I mean, the whole purpose of heat sink compound is to eliminate air between the surface of the chip and the heat sink itself because air does not conduct heat. So you need an ultra thin layer just to fill the air gaps between the heat sink and that ultra flat glass surface you need hardly any thermal compound hardly any so people who just squirt a bunch on there and it gets out all over the place it's not only a waste of heat sink compound but it's dangerous because some of these thermal compounds will actually short um, the board because they have silver and other metals in them so i also have some adapters here for different boards. You see that little JTAG, I don't know if you can see that or not. The newer boards use that one. Let's see what else I got in here. Oh, I've got an actual BIOS chip. I just throw them in there. And I got another connector for other boards. So we can do all the Apple boards, the, the 2017 touch bars, the new ones, we can do them all. I can remove the uh, passwords, the serial numbers, change them around. It's pretty essential when you're repairing boards or you have an exchange service for people that you give them back something they can just drop in and go. I see a lot of people selling boards where they don't do the serial number or the serial number's blanked and the person has to figure out how to get a piece of software illegally off the internet called a uh, serializer from Apple and put their own serial number on it. And it's a big hassle for the customers. So. I try to do it all for them. So we're still running. As you can see, it is writing right there. Nothing like watching a pot boil. It takes a little bit of time. I wish it were faster, but it's not. Now it's gonna verify. I want to make sure there's no errors or glitches. I don't know if you've ever seen my bench sloppy before, but this is my bench trash because I've been so busy the last few days. Here's some MacBooks I haven't quite got figured out in the past few days. These are my this is my stubborn pile. These little suckers they. Um, they got a problem I haven't quite figured out, so and it's kind of a signature problem, so I'll be working on those this weekend. Where are we at? We're up to... We're almost done. We're getting there. 
I upgraded my sandpaper the other day. Usually one of these things lasts a month and I'd finally worn it out. Been doing some phone repairs, so I have my little nozzles out. Oh, did you hear that beep? All right, that's it. Once I get that message, I'm done. I know that I have a good serial number and this thing is ready to go. Thanks everybody.